I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Jim McGinty sent me a request for a video on sharpening the old frame buck Swede saws that were uh, made in the 1920s. Wooden frame, kind of an inch and a half wide blade, just like this one. Here you go, Jim. This one's for you. When I said I'd set up a sharpening uh, video on how to sharpen a buck saw, I thought, no problem, I'll just go out to the garage and get it. Looked high and low. Couldn't find the darn thing until I was looking for something else and having to look at it. I don't do much sledding anymore. It would have been a long time before I looked there. This is a buck saw. It's a wooden frame saw. Very economical. It only uses a steel in a small part of it. has a steel turnbuckle, but quite often these were made with a piece of rope or twine to use to draw this up. So all you needed to have was this small piece of steel strap to actually do the sawing. The turnbuckle comes off the two legs come apart, the center piece comes apart, you pull the pins, the blade comes out, and the whole thing can be wrapped up and carried with you in a backpack. Very economical. Center of the saw blade is one and nine sixteenths, and on either end it's one and three eighths. What that does is the saw goes through the kerf, fewer teeth actually touch. Just like any handsaw, the first thing we need to do is joint the blade. I've explained it before, but I'll give you a cursory explanation this time, because I know you can go back to the other videos and see what this is. It allows me to bend the file so that it matches the radius that the breasted saw is at. bend it a whole lot, but you'd be amazed how much of a radius you can get on it. I think I got a little too much.
the idea is to have every one of the teeth have a little shiny spot on the tip. Now you can see that these down here have the shiny spot, but I haven't hit this side enough. And all I'm looking for is just a little bit of shine on the tip. I don't need a lot. The shine just tells me that the file is touching all the teeth. And that means that the saw has all the teeth at the same length. Now why is this important? This saw is designed to go through rather coarse wood. So it's got big teeth on it. If you had one tooth that was longer than the rest, that tooth would cut and the one right behind it would not. So you lose half of the effective action of that part of the blade. If you go along here and you have every other tooth not striking, not cutting, Pretty soon, you're spending an awful lot of time shoving a dead piece of metal through a chunk of wood. Makes it a lot more work. Now we'll disassemble the saw again. need to clean the blade. Now this one, surprisingly enough, is not pitted. This is just a piece of really coarse memory paper stapled to a board. Henry Diston and Sons Keystone Saw Works Philadelphia, USA Cast Steel Warranted, thin back, patent ground, registered with the U.S. Patent Office. Just about done on the other side. The individual teeth are also rusty. And they need to be cleaned just as much as the blade does. but you don't want to take a whole lot of metal off of them because the tips of the blades have a set. And when you file it down with your sandpaper, you take away some of the metal which reduces the set. And the whole idea of the set, as we know from the other videos, is to make the saw curve wide enough to allow the saw blade to pass through it after the teeth have cut the piece of wood. Now look at that. We have an edge.
And this blade was made by Diston and Sons, which tells us the approximate date that it was made because we know that his sons entered into the business at a certain time. whole website about the Diston family, how Henry Diston started his saw company. I'll put a link to the website down in the description. Well that's neat. That makes this saw more valuable. Not that I'm going to sell it. It's just to me, having a Diston saw means that I have a good saw. Now Atkins, and there's a bunch of other names that make saws. Sandvik, which is a Swedish company if I recall correctly. They all made good saws. But Henry started it. Now the etch mentions thin back. Remember we talked about set, and what set means and what it does. Having a thin back does the same thing. It means that you don't need as much set in the saw blade if the back of the blade is thinner than the tooth area. You don't need all the strength down here because it's not trying to have this tooth be a point up standing by itself taking all the abuse from driving itself through the wood. This is just a bridge to carry the teeth. This blade is also under tension. so. Instead of, this blade is fairly stiff compared to this one. Because this one, when you push the blade through the wood, it has to resist the bending forces out here on the end and clear down to the back. Whereas this one, because of the design of the frame, it's actually pulled through the cut. So instead of having to push the blade, the front of the blade is pulled through. And that means that the, this blade only has to follow along. It just has to be strong enough not to snap in the middle when it's being stretched. That means that this blade can be thinner and it cuts easier because you're removing less material. Less work's involved in making the cut. Let's have a look down the length of the blade. You can see that every other tooth is bent. This one is bent towards me, that one's bent away, towards, away, towards, away, towards, away, all the way down the length of the blade. That's the set we've been talking about.